Hello again, here we are, back indoors, looking at the Young Astronomer's Handbook, 1981. Brand new when I bought it, but you might want to have a look around in the in the charity shops, etc., second-hand shops, maybe online, and pick up yourself a, a copy. It's called Young Astronomer's Handbook again, as I mentioned before, but it's also ideal for adults as well, very easy to use. I use it myself for reference as well. So on opening the book, we see here some uh, young kids doing that thing that we used to do when we first bought telescopes back then, looking through the eyepiece. Um, none of these were asking, how can I take photographs with a smartphone? Uh, probably because smartphones weren't invented back then. But this was the back in the good old days when you look through the eyepiece and there's that wow factor. No worrying about photography. You know, no, just walk before you can run. Enjoy that view through the eyepiece, looking at all the stars, um, etc. And so the book starts off with the early views of the universe, uh, very, very easy to follow uh, about what they knew about the night sky before any instruments at all. It was just what you could see with the naked eye. Uh, moving on, the short stories about the early astronomers, uh, Newton in this case, and uh, as with many of the early astronomers, uh, lots of, whether it's uh, spacecraft, lunar features, etc., they, have the, uh, they are named after these early astronomers. And moving on, we, turn, we learn about our, our place in the galaxy and an example of other night sky objects that you can see uh, from one night to the, the other, from one night to the next, explaining the difference between, between nebula and galaxies and clusters, etc. Uh, we go on to then the early astronomy, astro astronomical instruments before, before optics, uh, and these helped people find the way around the night sky, navigate, and maybe help work out distance. Before we then come on to the pages about the all important optics, um, showing us the basics of telescopes, really, difference between a refractor and a reflector, and the advantages of both. And then going on, uh, we see some lovely pictures of uh, much larger telescopes, but uh, many of which are still in, in use today, and um, no doubt there's, a, there's been a number much bigger than these built in the meantime. And then going on to uh, amateur equipment, keeping it really, really nice and uh, realistic, I will say. Like there's none of these shops here. They're not they're not promoting telescopes. Very small two inch aperture with five, six hundred mag five or six hundred magnif magnification, keeping it realistic, recommending around about 50 magnification for every inch of aperture. And uh, the good old Pura prism binoculars there. They were recommending sort of 7 by 50, 8, uh, 10 by 50, etc. Just to get you started. And my first set was a, uh, a pair of 8 by 40s. And I may have actually read this book to get a few ideas. And then, yes, it does mention astrophotography, but with an SLR camera connected to a telescope, as you can see, prime focus. And that must have been very difficult back in the day because editing was very limited. And so you had to get it right pretty much first time so then on to the different types of stars star magnitudes telling you about clusters i'll not go into star magnitudes in too great detail now maybe do that at a later time and then our own sun of course is a star the nearest one to us going through the composition of uh, our, our own sun and uh, then on to the all, all important star charts uh, where I spend still uh, spend a lot of time planning my evenings, going through the different constellations that are uh, available to see at any point um, of, the, of the year. Not not over complicated, as you can see, nice and clear, just showing the brighter stars, and then going on to more slightly more detail in this example, Cygnus the Swan, pointing out some lovely objects that you can see w with an amateur telescope. Uh, in particular, Beta Cygni, uh, Alberio, one, one of, if not the nicest double stars in the night sky. And this will help you find that object. And then it goes into a little bit more detail, showing you the um, Taurus and within the Al Aldebaran, the Hyades and the Pleiades. Apologies if I have pronounced those wrong. And different stars within that. And so... But very, you know, easy to see in any amateur telescope and even binoculars. And so you can look at the seven sisters or Pleiades and uh, see 
uh, how many of these stars you can see and, and put a name to them. And then it comes onto the planets. And as you can see, a lot of the from 1981 that we didn't have Hubble or the James Webb, James Webb telescope, etc., or satellites or spacecraft going to the planets. It was all artist impressions. So it'd be interesting comparing the artist impressions back then with what we can see now. And then, as if by magic, we did, did we do see Hubble, which is going to launch in three years' time if you would have bought this book in 1981. So it's, it's nice to look back and think and see what they thought back then. And who knows, in another 40 years' time, teenagers reading this book or, or listening to me here will look back and think, 40 years' time, my word, did we really believe that? How wrong we was. Who knows what's around the corner? And so that's it. We've now reached the back page of uh, the Young Astronomer's Handbook. But don't let that put you off. Believe me, it's for everyone. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I may do a few of these uh, book reviews in the future just to mix it up a bit. So uh, thanks again and we shall see you next time.